So people have been wondering, is it possible to create dynamic foliage on Roblox? And I'm going to tell you that, yeah, it's possible. But is it hard? Well, not really. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's get into the video. So let's take these bushes for example. Right now we only have the branch and the leaves that are meshes that also use surface appearance. And also the leaves are welded to the branch because they aren't anchored. But how did I make this effect of the bush actually moving and well, reacting to my character? And well, the answer is that I used a module that I already covered on my channel a few times and the module is called Windshake. Right, I have a tutorial that covers it, as well as a few different ones like the cloth and a dynamic flag. And what this module does by itself, if I just come to this bush, is going to make it move, like this. And now it's not going to react to my character by itself, because we need to script some kind of a logic. And first I'm just going to present how this is basically just set up, where the branch, its pivot point is right here on the bottom in the center. And this branch also has the wind shake tag right here, as well as the different attributes, like the wind direction, wind power, and the wind speed. And like I said, the leaves are connected to the branch with a well constraint. So now this script is actually what's making it move, is the wind shake initialize, for which I recommend that you watch my video where I cover this module. And now there is going to be many different methods of you actually achieving this effect. But the main thing that we are going to need right now is going to be a part that's roughly the same size as the bush. And this part I'm going to call it a bush zone. And also move it into the model, then disable its shadow, then the collision, as well as give it some transparency. And I'm also going to change its color, just so you can see it a bit easier. And since we don't want this part to be static, we wanted to follow the movement of the bush, we need to connect it to the branch like I connected the leaves by adding a weld constraint. Then selecting the part 0 to be the bush zone and part 1 to be the branch. And now you should see these green outlines. So now if I just do a playtest, this part is going to be moving along with the bush. And now one of the methods that you can use for the interaction between the player's character and the bush could be for example the touched even on the bush zone. So whenever the player touches it, it's going to move away from the player. But then you'd have to script different logic, for example, so the bush isn't going to basically just sway away every time the player touches it, because it could, for example, just sway away, then come back, touch the player again, sway away, and basically just do that loop every millisecond. Where a bit easier alternative could be using something like, for example, the zone module, which is a module for creating dynamic zones, but the logic of the bush moving is basically going to be the same for this module and if you are to use a touched event or anything else. So no matter what, this bush is going to need some kind of a script. So I'm going to add a script and then since windshake is done locally, I basically also want to do this locally because this effect is not something that the server has to do. So I'm going to change the run context of the script to the client. And of course, you could also use a local script in the, let's say, replicated storage, or somewhere like the starter player script to set up the bush and so on, or maybe even use the tag editor, then just add a tag right here and then loop through the objects that are tagged with the bush tag, let's say. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm only going to do one script inside of the bush model. And what we need to do in the script is firstly make references to the bush, because we need to get the branches and also the bush zone. So the local bush is equal to the script.parent, then the bush zone is going to be equal to the bush, then wait for child, and the bush zone. And later on for the windshake and the attributes, we also need to get the branch. So we just do this. And also for getting the zone module and setting a zone for this bush, we need a reference to that and also we need to set the bush zone container. So I do replicated storage is equal to game get service and the replicated storage. Now the zone module is going to be equal to the require, then the replicated storage, and zone. And now I'm actually going to rename this one, this is going to be the bush part, and then I'm going to make another variable called bush zone, is going to be equal to, and now I'm going to use the zone module and the new constructor to actually create the zone. And now we need to pass it the container, which is going to be the bush part right here. And now this is where you could use the touched event on this part, but I'm going to use the bush zone that player entered, then connect a function with the player that has entered the bush zone, and then I'm just going to print out the player that name. So it's just going to print out my name whenever I enter this bush. So we know that this part is working, and now that we have the player, we want to get the player's character. 
So you can do local character is equal to player that character, and then just in case the player doesn't have the character for some reason, we can do if not character then return end, and then you want to get the player's humanoid root part. So you do character find this child and the humanoid root part. And again, if the player doesn't have the humanoid root part for some reason, we just want to do return end again. So now for example if the player was standing right here where my cursor is and entered the zone, we want to move this bush away in this direction. And first we need two things, one is going to be the humanoid root part position and the second one is going to be the vector distance from the humanoid root part to the bush. So we get the character word position that's equal to the humanoid root part that C frame that position. And then we want to calculate the new direction that the bush is going to be moving in, which is going to be a vector 3. And it's going to be calculated from the character's word position minus the branch that C frame that position. So this is going to give a vector that isn't exactly going to be the right one, because the wind direction as the attribute is set on a one unit scale. So after getting the direction vector, we just need to do that unit. This will translate the vector to be corresponding to the wind's direction. And now we just need to change the bush's attributes to different values. One of them is going to be the negative direction vector because we want to move it away from the character. So you just do branch set attribute and now this attribute is going to be called wind direction. And it's going to autofill right here. And now the value that we want to give it is going to be the minus new direction vector. So if I just do a playtest and go into the bush, nothing really is going to happen except it moving slightly away from my character. That's because we also need to change the wind power as well as lower the wind speed a bit. So I just do branch, set attribute again, wind power, and since these are on the default values, this one is on 0.5, we want to make the effect to be basically just noticeable, so I can change the wind power to be something like 3. So now it's going to be 6 times more than what it was previously. And lastly, we want to set the attribute for the wind speed to be lower than 20, to something around 5. Now the effect is going to be a bit more clear, like this. And this could technically already work, but sometimes it's going to stay in this position, even if we leave the zone. So we just need to reset it for it to go back to its original settings. And we can do that in the bush zone, that player exited event. And then we can either set the attributes again, or just have a table of default values. Where the wind direction is going to be the branch, get attribute, wind direction, same with the wind speed and the wind power. And now we can just do a for loop to set these attributes. So you just want to do branch with attribute and for the attribute name we want to set the value. And this should be player, my bad. So now if I enter it and leave it, it's going to go back to its original position. But this isn't going to work 100% of the time and that's because we need to do a little quick fix for something like you just saw. And it's just as simple as giving a cooldown of let's say one second. So now with the values of the bush cooldown, the current cooldown, and also OS clock, we can just script the logic. And you're just checking if the current CPU time minus the current cooldown is going to be more or equal than the bush cooldown, then we just want to do the same logic as we did right here. And we also want to set the current cooldown to be the clock again. So now the same thing isn't really going to happen. It's just going to go back to its original direction, and then since my player is already inside of the zone, it's basically just not going to do the attribute changing again. So this cooldown is basically just like a failsafe, just so the plant isn't going to act weirdly. And now this is the most basic logic for creating the dynamic foliage system, where this isn't even playing a sound or handling for example more than one player. If you for example just had two different players, where one of them would enter the zone, then they waited in the bush for like 5 seconds, then another player entered the zone, like this is going to be basically fine, but after they leave the zone, it's going to reset this to the original position, which like I said isn't really bad, except the bush isn't going to stay in this position basically all the time. But the most important part is basically the player just entering the zone and leaving it, and that's what I wanted to cover in this video. But also for the sound thing, I'm actually just going to cover this. So if you wanted to play a sound whenever the player entered the bush, what you could do is have a sound instance in the bush, 
I just created manually in this logic, then just make a reference to the sound, where this would be the bush part, find the shred of class sound, and then later here I would check if the sound actually exists. I want to do sound and play. And just to show it, I'm going to use, well, this audio, where I'm just going to copy the asset ID and then place it into the sound ID right here. And then I'm just going to enter the zone. And just in case that few people were actually entering the bush at the same time, you want to do if sound and not sound that is playing, then you just want to do the sound play. And just for the showcase again, I'm going to make the part transparent and just close the script and duplicate this bush a few times. And now while having actually a bunch of these bushes right here, I could just walk through them. And it's actually quite funny just hearing this switch sound. But yeah, you can basically see how this effect is achieved. So if you enjoyed this video, then leave a like, or subscribe to the channel and go check out my UGC items. But that's going to be everything for today. So thank you guys for watching, hope everyone had a nice day, and see ya guys.